Hey guys, this is Craig Miglaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to read the outdoor unit rating plate and the indoor unit rating plate for an air conditioning system. Make sure to check out our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and also ebook, both available over at acservicetech.com. I'm going to take you in for a close up image of this rating plate. So, first thing you're going to notice is that the serial number here, the barcode, and this serial number are covered up, and the reason for that is you don't want somebody else using your serial number to claim for warranty parts. So I have them covered up. So the product number right here is an extended version of the model number. And in this case, this one's a carrier unit. And what you're really looking for when you're trying to figure out the size of the outdoor unit is you're looking for numbers that are 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, or 60. And the reason that you're looking for those numbers is those are thousands of BTUs of heat removal capacity. So in this case, you see that we have 24, 36, and 30. So we're trying to determine if this is a 24,000 BTU or a 36,000 BTU or a 30,000 BTU outdoor unit. So for every 12,000 BTUs, that's one ton of cooling capacity or heat removal capacity. So in this case, since this is a carrier unit, you, if you don't know already, you need to look up the nomenclature in order to determine what numbers and what letters mean mean what. Since this is a carrier unit, a 24 means that it's just a residential unit. So that's that doesn't mean anything. And over here, the 3 on this one is talking about the, the single phase electricity. So that's 208, 230. So the number that we're really looking for is the 36 right here. And that is the BTUs. So that's 36,000 BTUs of heat removal capacity. So, so that's that. Here we have the metering device, and it says if you have a TXV at the indoor unit, you want to use the subcooling method to check the refrigerant charge. That does not mean that the indoor unit has a TXV because these can come as separate units. And so you need to go to the indoor evaporator coil to see if you have a TXV or a piston or a capillary tube. The factory charge, this is how much refrigerant that the factory put in this outdoor unit. And it came with R22 and 6.74 pounds of refrigerant so that includes enough refrigerant for this outdoor unit 15 foot with a line set and the indoor evaporator coil this indoor txv sub cooling is the average sub cooling that the manufacturer is saying would work for the this this unit so as the temperature increases sub cooling actual sub cooling raises a little bit but it's saying that eight degrees is the average on other rating plates from other manufacturers you may have two or three target sub coins on that rating plate or you may have a graph in order to determine what the sub coin should be on this one it's saying eight degrees is your average your power supply this is for a residential unit so you see that it says 208 230 but that also includes 240 volts which is normally what you're going to have at a residence and it's single phase and 60 hertz so in the united states we have 60 hertz and in europe you have 50 hertz so this is just a residential United States system. The permissible voltage at the outdoor unit, this is high, but this is really low. Uh, I, I would want to make sure that we don't have much of a voltage drop at this outdoor unit and that you do have 240 volts at the unit in order to supply the motors with the correct voltage. Here you have the uh, elect electrical information for the compressor. So you see that it says 208, 230, single phase, 60 hertz. So it's, it's matching your power supply. This is your rated load amps so this is not what the system should be running and it's not the running load amps this right here is for the manufacturer's sake and it's based off of the maximum amperage that the system can maintain without popping the the thermal overload on the inside of the compressor so that's what that is for it's not what it should be running at you don't charge refrigerant in here until you get to this you, you don't use that for that so this is your locked rotor amps, and this is around the amperage that you're going to have right when the, the unit turns on during that first quarter second. So if you're trying to check your inrush and you're monitoring that from year to year to see if it's increasing, uh, but basically this, this is roughly what it's going to be, but this is when your compressor is locked and it's not moving. Here you have your fan motor once again. Your electrical information matches your power supply. It's saying that it's going to use a one-fifth horsepower motor, and you, if you're going to replace that, you want to follow the rating plate of the, the fan motor itself. And this is the full load amps. 
So this is basically what the fan motor should be running at uh, while the system's operating. Here you have your design test pressure. So this system is designed to run at 300 PSI on the high side and 150 on the low side, but the manufacturer has pressure tested this for 700 PSI. So that does not mean that you should pressure test this system at 700 PSI, especially if it's older. You want to go to the indoor evaporator coil because that max design pressure is probably going to be lower than your outdoor unit. And so you want to stay below the, the indoor coil max design pressure when pressure testing. And if it's an older system, you want to stay much lower than that yet because you don't want to cause a leak uh, if, the, if the tubing is corroded. Next we have the minimum circuit amps, which is 19.2, and then we have our max fuse and max breaker as 30 amps. So the electricity supplying this unit has to be able to handle at least 19.2 amps steadily. Now that does not mean that this unit runs anywhere near this, this number right here. So it should be far less than, than this amperage rating. But this is talking about your, your wire sizes, but basically you want to size your wire feeding this unit to make sure that it, it can handle 30 amps. So that's 10 gauge wire and 8 gauge wire would handle 40 amps. But basically you have your max fuse at your outdoor disconnect needs to be 30 amps and your breaker inside your indoor breaker box in the, in the building needs to be 30 amps as well. So you wanna make sure to not have these oversized for just for safety reasons for this outdoor unit. Now we're gonna take you into the indoor evaporator cool and we'll take a look at that rating plate. Here we have a horizontal furnace and then we have a horizontal evaporator coil and I'm going to take you up for a close-up image of this rating plate. Here you have your model number of the indoor evaporator coil and you see that this says 36 and that's one of those numbers that I was telling you to pay attention to. So that is 36,000 BTUs of heat removal capacity so that's the size of the evaporator so that needs to be matched with the outdoor unit. This 17 is just the cabinet size and then you see there's an H there and that's for horizontal. The end, that's a end coil, but basically you want to be looking for that BTU per hour size. We have our serial number covered up, but you would need that in order to do any type of warranty work on a system. Here we have our max design pressure, and this is much lower than the outdoor unit, so you see that we have to always check our max design pressure at the indoor evaporator coil in order to know what we're going to pressure test an empty system to. But that's if this system was new. So this R22 system is older and you see that the date is 2007. So this quill is, is fairly old and there's tin on this quill so the copper could be corroded. We don't want to create a leak when pressure testing. So since this is an older system, we may only want to pressure test this line set in the evaporator quill to maybe only 100 to 150 PSI G and that's it. So this, the refrigerant for this evaporator coil is R22, and, and that this coil was originally made for R22, and that's why we have a lower design pressure. I've seen some design pressures as low as 150 on older R22 coils. This uh, factory installed TXV is for R22 only, so not only would you not want to run R4 tonight in this coil because of the lower design pressure, but also because of the TXV. So this TXV is for R22 only. Now, if we had a rating plate that said R410A and the max design pressure was high, then you could use that coil for either R410A or R22, depending on what the outdoor unit was running. So you just need to make sure that the metering device is matched for the refrigerant that you're using. So if that outdoor unit was an R410A system, then you want to have a R410A TXV. If you're using a new R410A coil for an older R22 system, then you would need to change the TXV out and make it an R22 TXV. Now, when you're checking the refrigerant charge and you're thinking you're going to be using the sub method, you just want to make sure that you might have to take that indoor evaporator cool cover off just to confirm that that TXV is still there. You may have had a technician uh, take that TXV out and put in a piston in, instead. So you just want to confirm the metering device by looking at it. Make sure to check out our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and also ebook. We go over the system preparation for refrigerant, checking the refrigerant charge, and also troubleshooting methods. We have both of these books available, the paperback and the ebook, available over at acservicetech.com, and we have the full outline available there. This paperback is also available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.